recently i've been receiving a lot of comments asking how to make or create a conceptual framework even though i already have a lot of uploaded videos on youtube discussing the topic but i think i still have to elaborate on this topic that is why i decided to create this particular video so at the end of this video you shall be able to understand how to make a conceptual framework using ivdv as well as identify when and how to use this specific framework and also to discover ways in presenting ivdv in a research paper so i know that you're ready so let's begin now when we say ivdv framework it's stands for it stands for independent variable and dependent variable now um maybe you are confused are these concepts different or what makes them different and what makes them the same what makes them the same is actually the concept of or the word variable the question is what is a variable now i would like you to look at the definition that we have in my slide when we say variable these are people, places, things, or phenomenon that you, the researcher, is trying to study. Ibig sabihin, yung variable, ito yung mga bagay, mga tao, mga pangyayari na nais mong, nais mong pag-aralan or ito yung mga bagay na pag-aaralan mo sa iyong study. Halimbawa, ng mga variable ay yung age, gender, grade level, etc. Okay. Pero ano nga ba ang independent at dependent variable? Kailan natin masasabi ng isang variable ay dependent at independent? Now, tignan natin yung definition sa ating slide. When we say independent variable, these are variable or variables that stable, that are stable rather, and unaffected by any other variable. Ibig sabihin, they can stand alone. Hindi sila na-influensahan or na-apektuhan. Dahil nga, kapag sinabi natin independent variable, ito yung mga bagay o mga tao, datos na pag-aaralan natin or imamanipulate natin, iimbestigahan natin sa ating research. Okay? Whereas, kapag sinabi naman natin dependent variables, ito yung mga umaasa or ito yung mga variables na nakadepende okay sa magiging resulta ng pag-aaral natin or pagmamanipulate natin sa ating independent variables okay so ibig sabihin walang dependent variable kung walang independent variable ulitin natin yon kapag sinabi nating independent variable ito yung mga bagay na pag-aaral natin sa ating research Ngayon, yung dependent variable, ano yung mga magiging resulta ng mga pag-aaral na ito na gagawin natin sa ating independent variable? Yun naman yung magiging dependent variable natin. Yung mga magiging resulta. Okay? O resulta ng pag-aaral natin or pagmamanipulate natin sa ating independent variable. Now, para mas malinawan ka at para mas maunawaan mo ang dalawang konseptong ito, let's see this example. Halimbawa, ang ating research topic ay The Night Owls, Effects of Sleeping Pattern of College Students to Their Academic Performance and Health. Ibig sabihin sa Filipino, um, ang mga kwago, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's kwago, but ano kaya yung epekto ng sleep deprivation or yung pattern ng pagtulog ng mga college students sa kanilang academic performance at health? Meron kaya? Yun yung ating pag-aaralan. Now, intindihin natin yung um, study, I mean, yung topic. Ano sa tingin mo yung mga variables? Again, ano yung mga pag-aaralan natin, yung manipulate natin sa given na example na ito? So, we have the sleeping pattern. We have the college students. And also, we have academic performance and health. Bakit kaya? Bakit ito yung ating variables? Again, sa ating title, The Effects of Sleeping Patterns of College Students. Ano ba yung pag-aaralan natin? Sino ba yung pag-aaralan natin? Yun yung mga variables na tinatawag. So, at, so in our example, our variable includes the college students because we are going to study them, right? Ayun. Now, let's have the sleep pattern. Bakit isa yun sa pag-aaralan natin? 
Dahil nga, titignan natin kung may effect nga ba ang sleeping pattern sa academic performance. Okay, ibig sabihin, kasali din ang academic performance sa pag-aaralan natin. Bakit? Dahil ang academic performance, okay, ay isang variable na kung saan nakadepende siya sa sleeping patterns ng ating college students. At last but not least, health. Pag-aaralan din natin or titignan natin kung ano ba yung effects or are there really relations? Are there any relation or relationship or link between the sleeping pattern of college students sa health? Okay? Now, ang problema na lang natin ngayon, since alam na natin ang variables sa ating given example, which of these variables are under independent variable and dependent variable? Ngayon, malalaman natin yan kung titignan natin yung ating next slide. Ngayon, kapag sinabi natin independent, di ba sabi natin, ito yung pag-aaralan natin, ito yung imamanipulate natin. Ibig sabihin sa ating example, ang i-manipulate natin o ang iimbestigahan natin ay yung college students at yung sleep pattern nila. 'Di ba? Kaya naman sila or ito yung ilalagay natin sa independent variable. Bakit? Dahil ito yung mga bagay or yung mga tao na pag-aaralan natin sa research. Kaya sila independent variable. Okay. Ngayon, dumako naman tayo sa dependent variable. Bakit academic performance at health yung dependent variable? Okay, ibig sabihin kasi nito na yung ating dependent variable na academic performance and health ay mangyayari, okay, malalaman natin kung may effect ang sleep pattern sa academic performance ng college students. Right? Remember, pag sinabi nating dependent variable, yung magiging result or yung result ng sleep pattern ng college students ay yung academic performance, right? Kung titignan natin kung may effect yung academic performance, I mean, yung sleeping patterns nila sa kanilang academic performance. Maliban dyan, titignan din natin kasi kung ano kaya maliban sa academic performance yung naapektuhan ng sleeping patterns ng college students. Yung kanyari, Paano kung laging puyat yung isang college student? Ano kaya yung magiging effect niya ngayon? Yung effect na tinatawag natin, tinatawag natin ngayon ay yung results. Okay? Nang pag-aaral natin ngayon ay maaring tingnan natin yung effect niya doon sa health ng college students. Okay? Ulitin ko. Kapag sinabi natin independent variable, ito yung mga bagay na imamanipulate or pag-aaral natin. Now, in our case, we have the college students and their sleeping patterns. Dahil yun nga ang pag-aaral natin, iimbestigahan natin kung, ayun, kung, ano kayong result niya mm -hmm. doon sa kanilang A or first, academic performance. May effect kaya yung sleeping patterns ng, academic, uh, ng, ng students sa kanilang academic performance at ganun din sa kanilang health. Meron kaya. Okay, ngayon, yung arrow na nakikita nyo or nakikita mo sa slide natin, this arrow here, ito yung nagsisignify ng relation, okay, ng link ng independent variable sa dependent variable. Ibig sabihin, yung arrow na to, it signifies that this variable, yung academic performance and health, ay nakadepende, umaasa doon sa pag-aaral na isinagawa natin doon sa college students at ng kanilang sleeping pattern. Okay, ngayon alam mo na kung paano mag-design at gumawa ng conceptual framework or yung paradigm or yung drawing na ganito, ang tanong ko ngayon, paano natin ito i-discuss? How are we going to discuss it in our paper? Okay, puntahan natin yung ating next slide. As you can see, meron akong sample dito na... Um, Discussion of conceptual framework. So, tignan natin kung baga ay give you, um, you can look at the zoom like, parang zinum ko na yung isang page, or main part ng page, yung conceptual framework. So, maglagay ka ngayon ng conceptual framework, okay, na subheading or subtitle. Sa baba nito, of course, you have to write an overview or a short or a brief discussion of the concepts or the theories involved in your research. Ibig sabihin, ito yung mga, it, it gives an overview of how concepts, different concepts, 
okay, are related to in explaining or in showing the process or the flow of your study. Okay, so in our case, ang ilalagay natin ay this part of the paper presents the energy conservation theory as a central concept of this study. Theories regarding the correlation of health and sleep also guided the study to unravel the effects of sleep patterns among college students. So as you can see with this example, I just summarized the or I just gave an overview as to what the reader would expect under the conceptual framework page of my research. Okay. Now, under that specific conceptual framework, maglalagay ka ngayon or i-discuss mo ngayon yung mga concepts na nilagay mo doon sa conceptual framework mo. Remember, ang tawag natin dito ay mga conceptual framework. Remember, yung um, college students, academic performance, ito din yung concepts or yung um concept of parts ng ating paradigm of the study. Ibig sabihin, hindi, lang, hindi ka dapat tumigil dyan. You have to explain it. Okay. So, in our case, sa ating halimbawa, so, sa baba ng brief definitions natin, I mean, sa brief discussion natin, sa overview ng ating conceptual framework, magsusulat tayo ngayon, i-explain natin ngayon yung mga concepts na pinaglalalagay natin dito sa ating paradigm. Remember, ito yung paradigm natin, yung may arrow. Okay, ngayon punta tayo sa discussion natin. So, since um, you see or I see that energy conservation theory has an effect to the um, academic performance and health of the college students, kaya ko siya ilalagay dito. Ngayon, hahanap ako ngayon ng related literatures na mag explain sa kung ano yung connection ng energy conservation theory sa sleep patterns or sa mga estudyante or college students in particular. Besides that, yung sleep pattern. Okay, explain ko dito kung ano yung connection ng sleep pattern at academic performance. Okay, kasi di ba yun yung ating um, variables. May connection ba ang sleep pattern sa academic performance? So, sa ating discussion, dapat mailagay natin May explain natin gamit ang mga related literatures or researches discussing the connection, the interrelation or correlation of sleep patterns to academic performance. Okay, malalaman natin yan kapag nag-search sa tayo ng mga researches. Okay, mga existing researches or theories upang makita natin kung may connection nga. Okay, dito natin i-explain lahat yun. Okay, next. Sa next naman na concept na explain natin, kung may effect ba yung sleep pattern doon sa health naman ng ating participants. So, sa ating discussion, syempre, under this third paragraph, if you can see the picture clearly, sleep patterns and health. Ibig sabihin dyan, i-discuss ko naman ano yung connection naman ng sleep pattern doon sa health ng isang estudyante or ng isang tao. Okay? Kasi nga, ito yung mga connections, I mean, ito yung mga concepts na nandito sa aking paradigm of the study. Okay? After niyan, gawin na natin ito. Maaari na natin i-drawing. Ibig sabihin, bago natin ilagay yung drawing, ito, nakikita niyo naman siguro, ito, itong drawing na ito, ito, Bago mo gawin yung drawing na yan, syempre, i-discuss mo muna yan. Okay? Aha, now, I would like you to look at the this. So, sa taas ng drawing kasi na to, di ba, nakikita nyo yung figure 1 shows the, ayun. So, dito sa figure 1 shows the, syempre, i-explain mo muna kung ano yung mga concepts or yung mga Yung, yung connection, ano yung naging connection ng iba't ibang mga concepts tuun sa study mo. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng paragraph before this particular drawing. Ibig sabihin, after mong diniscuss kung ano yung connection ng uh, theory, ng sleep conservation theory sa college students, after mong inexplain yung sleep pattern at yung kanyang connection sa academic performance gamit ang RRL after that, after mo ding explain yung sleep pattern sa health ng mga students, ngayon naman ilalagay mo na yung drawing, right? ito, itong drawing na ito pero bago pa ito pa, bago pa ito yung, bago mo pa ilagay yung drawing rather, you have to discuss it first, 
okay? Let's say this figure or paradigm of the study, sabi dyan sa figure 1, di ba? Now, sa taas ng picture na to, okay, ilagay mo muna, figure 1 describes or shows the connection of the sleeping patterns of college students to academic performance and health. Ayun. So, kumbaga, magbibigay ka muna ng brief um, illustration, I mean, description of this paradigm or of this illustration of yours. Okay? Naintindihan ba kung paano at kung ano ang gamit ng independent at dependent variable as a theory? Okay. So, thank you for watching. Bago natin i-end yung video na to, let's summarize the concepts or the lesson. Kapag sinabi natin IVDV as a framework, it stands for independent and dependent variable. Ibig sabihin, yung study mo dapat ay merong independent at dependent variable. At obligasyon mo bilang research researcher na ikwento ilahad yung koneksyon ng independent variable doon sa dependent variable mo. Now, kapag sinabi naman natin variable or variables, ito yung mga... Topics, ito yung mga tao, mga bagay, mga pangyayari na iyong pag-aaralan naman, imamanipulate, titignan yung effect, okay, sa iyong study. Ito yung mga bagay na pag-aaralan mo. Okay, next, natutunan mo din, um, gamit ang isang practical example, you already know how to make a conceptual framework with the use of my example earlier. Okay, so mahalaga na malaman mo muna ano yung mga variables para matukoy mo kung alin ang independent variable at dependent variable upang sa ganun, mas malinaw mong ma-describe, ma-discuss ang koneksyon ng mga concepts na ito doon sa iyong conceptual framework. Okay, again, kapag sinabi ito, itong picture na ito, paradigm lang ito. Okay? Siyempre, bago mo ipakita to dapat may explanation ka sa bawat concepts na pinaglalalagay mo doon sa iyong um, paradigm or conceptual framework. Okay? I hope na hindi kita uh, ginulo. <laughs> I hope na nakatulong ang video na ito. So, there. I hope na mas naunawaan mo na natulungan kita sa pagsusulat mo ng iyong research paper or thesis thesis rather okay so thank you for watching and god bless in writing your research bye bye and take care